Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Ian Parry, and I'm joined by my colleague, Julia Bielak, and we're from the compliance team at the Australian Charities and Not-for-Profits Commission. This webinar will discuss how charities can strengthen their governance to combat fraud, and we appreciate this opportunity to support International Charity Fraud Awareness Week. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the ACNC's external conduct standards, standards which apply to charities that operate overseas. My colleague Julia will follow with an insight into the public donations that were received in response to the Australian bushfires of the 2019-2020 summer and how charities can be equipped to prevent fraud when they receive high volumes of donations and requests for assistance. Moving on to the next slide. So let's look at the external conduct standards. There are four in total which establish requirements for charities to have appropriate governance in regards to its overseas operations. In particular, the third external conduct standard deals with anti-fraud and anti-corruption. A key criteria of the external conduct standards is the requirement for charities to have processes and procedures in place that guide the decisions made by charities. This means charities need to have processes and procedures that work to combat fraud and corruption. The external conduct standards only apply to Australian charities that operate outside of Australia, but they're principles of good governance that can be implemented by all charities regardless of where they operate. Moving on to the next slide. Let's now look at the steps a charity can take to mitigate risks of fraud. Third parties provide a valuable service for charities and can support charities to fulfil their purpose. For example, by partnering with a charity to deliver a program. Transactions that involve third parties do require careful consideration and charities should take steps to account for the third party's reputation and experience. This could be particularly necessary where charities are engaging with a third party for the first time. I've mentioned the benefit of having documented policies and processes that support the charity's operations. Also, the staff and volunteers of the charity should be appropriately vetted through recruitment to ensure that risks are mitigated and charities should have a complaints or whistleblowing mechanism to identify wrongdoing so that it can be managed effectively. This includes circumstances where fraud is identified. Looking at the final point, a robust conflicts of interest policy will ensure that decisions are made in the best interest of the charity. And this reduces the risk of charitable funds being diverted from the charity's purpose and used for a personal benefit. And moving on to the next slide. What if things go wrong? While it's important to focus on the charity's governance to mitigate the risks of fraud occurring, and strong governance will reduce these risks, there is no guarantee that charities will be immune from fraud and charities should have strategies in place to put into action if faced with a situation where fraud has occurred. Charities should act to prevent or minimise any further loss or damage. They should be accountable and report the incident to relevant authorities. The charity should plan any statements to the media, the public, or its own staff and volunteers. The reputation of charities is critical and how charities respond to fraud so that matters are managed with transparency and accountability will be influential to maintain public trust and confidence. And finally, the charity should update its risk management plan and take reasonable steps to prevent the incident from reoccurring. So wrapping up the discussion on the ACNC's external conduct standards, Charities should continuously be reviewing their governance to have strong controls in place to support its operations and reduce the risks of fraud. And if things go wrong, be accountable to minimise the risk of further damage to the charity. I'll now hand over to my colleague, Julia, who will discuss the 2019-2020 bushfires in Australia. Thanks, Ian. So I'm going to talk about um, the 2019-2020 bushfires and uh, in Australia. They affected large parts of Australia and the public donated over $640 million for relief and recovery activity. Much of the promotion for public donations came from celebrities and other social media influencers. So we saw people like Nicole Kidman, Elton John, Pink, Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres, celebrities from around the world helping raise funds for charities here in Australia. 
some of the charities were faced with a significant increase in revenue. For example, one charity who generally received $3 million of revenue per year received $91 million um, at the time of the bushfire, a significant increase in funds and needed to manage getting those funds out to the public and to those impacted by the disasters. This increased the risk of non-genuine requests for assistance. So some of the things that charities saw and needed to manage were people posing as fundraisers that weren't, um, advertising for fake charities, impersonating um, charities online and seeking grant, people, se people seeking grants where they weren't eligible Online grant applications were hit by bots, another challenge that charities had to deal with um, during the time of increased donations. It also increased the risk of fraud related to unmanaged conflicts of interest and related party transactions. Charities grew significantly overnight and needed to purchase large amounts of services and get aid out to people in a hurry this could increase the risk of fraud related to those procurement processes. And now we'll go to the next slide. Here's some tips from some reviews we conducted uh, of charities that were involved in providing relief during the bushfires. They learned that working with partners could effectively help them identify beneficiaries who have a genuine need. Also for the public, checking the ACNC's register means that we regulate any charity that you donate to. Ensure your policies and procedures are fit for purpose and widely known and up to date. Make sure your volunteers, your staff and your board are all aware of them and review them if the circumstances change. You may need to um, buy in some help to improve your governance if your charity has increased in size significantly. You may need to update your IT or you may need to review your grant application process, but make sure everyone's aware of these things. Also, be transparent. Keep the public informed about the work you're doing and how donations are used. We found here in Australia that the charity, that the public, was very keen to know how charities were using their funds and were hungry for information about how their donations were assisting people, wildlife and, and those affected. If we go on to the next slide. So um, what there's some resources that are available for you um, if you would like to look for further information. Um, Ian's talked about external conduct standard three, uh, anti-fraud and anti-corruption. If you um, have a look at our website, um, you'll find specific resources to assist your charity to put things in place to mitigate fraud. Our governance toolkit also includes resources on financial abuse and cybersecurity and links to webinars that have been pre-recorded that you can watch at your own leisure. I'd just like to say thank you very much. Uh, we are both really pleased to be here today and to be participating in this webinar. And also like to say thank you for coming along and watching it today.